we're going to go to Revelation chapter 6. So we know the big news that's been going on within the USA. And within the USA, we know that there were... That they were <laughs> Iran is going to a big messed up case right here. Oh, yeah. So then obviously these countries, I did not draw accurately, but uh, have grace with your pastor over here. <laughs> Ever since Iran lost their general, they've been throwing into a fit. And then a lot of people, uh, what is very interesting, they were like panicking about World War III actually. Now there's one thing that I want to mention which is extremely interesting. We know that the Bible talks about, about Gog and Magog, that they will be involved with World War III. Now if you look up Bible scholars in general, not just Bible, uh, not just Bible believing preachers, but in general, a lot of them recognize that Gog and Magog would be referring to the communist countries so Russia, China, North Korea, etc. And then the Muslim countries as well. So you get Iran, Iraq, Syria, Turkey, etc., etc. So what is very interesting is that if you look up, for example, USA Today, if you look up their news source, all you have to do is this if you don't believe me. Type down, search word, I'm not talking about some conspiracy news journal, so don't <laughs> criticize me, you liberals over there. I'm giving you uh, the news source over here where people are turning to USA Today. If you look up USA Today, I want you to search word World War III. You know what's very interesting? I mean, the Bible already talked to you about it. Yep. When you look up World War III, it will always mention these particular countries. How about that? It will mention about Iran, Iraq, the Muslim nations, or it will mention North Korea, or it will mention Russia, etc. Isn't that intensely interesting? If you don't believe me, you start doing that. Type down World War III. I was very surprised. When I searched word, word, World War III just in USA Today, it would mention those countries. And obviously it did it with this case. As you know, Iran was shooting off the missiles. And then when they were shooting off the missiles, news reports stated that Thankfully that uh, there weren't casualties that were lost. Now, if you dig deep into conspiracies, maybe something else happened. But aside from that, we're not getting into that. I'm just simply giving current events from popular news sources, and then I'm going to compare biblical studies, Bible verses with that one. So then, what is uh, pretty interesting concerning about this is that a lot of people were wondering if this was World War III, that this would be blown up out of proportion. Well, if you type this one up, it would pop this one. But Revelation chapter 6 showed you something about World War III. If you look at Revelation chapter 6 and verse 4, uh, verse 3, And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. So there is no peace. And that they should kill one another, nations turning against each other. And there was given unto him a what? A great sword. Notice you'll see two signs right here about communism and Islam. You'll notice verse 4, it mentions about the horse being red. And then you'll notice right here, so that's communism right there. And then you notice right there a great sword. There's Islam right there, which is very interesting. So that can match up with Gog and Magog about those nations where they would turn against God. So this is very interesting where the Bible already prophesied to you where there will, will be a World War III once this red horse comes out. Now what is very interesting to me is that if you look at the news report on USA Today when Trump was talking about trying to calm the people that this is not a big deal, no casualties were lost, that everything should be fine now. And supposedly the news sources say that uh, both Iran and America do not want war, so then they want it to calm it down. So supposedly that's the case, but you never know. There's another side also with uh, conspiracy uh, news sources where they say they're not giving the full story, actually. So they mention about um, some big Muslim big shots where they would be mentioning that it is impossible for Iran to suddenly stop right here. They have a tendency to seek more retaliation. 
But anyways, aside from that point, what is interesting is that Trump stated this. After mentioning about all this war and conflict, he mentioned this, is that what the United Nations and the United States want at the end with the Muslim countries is that he said, what we, what we all want is that we all want to come together on a table and have peace together. Now, how about that? If you look at the previous seal, look at verse, uh, verse 2. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. There's your Antichrist. And he that sat on him had a bow. See, that's, uh, he had a bow, but not an arrow. Why is that? Because he's coming to claim peace. So it's supposed to be a peaceful, supposed to be a peaceful, but nevertheless, it's still a weapon because it is that it's the Bible says when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. First Thessalonians chapter five, Daniel chapter 11 comes in with flatteries and with words of peace. But by that, he conquers the world. And does he conquer? Yes, because keep reading verse two, a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. We're getting there. We're getting there. Now, this is even more interesting. You want me to show you something even more interesting than that? What is more interesting is that when this was going off concerning the missile issue, oil prices, if you read the news, what was going on is that now they're charging more concerning the oil. Why? Because they're not happy with what's going on, obviously. Now, if this keeps on going, I wonder what happens after a war. Then you got the next horse, which is at verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld in lo a black horse. Here's your economy. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Stock markets and those people, they're actually panicking right now because the oil prices were going up. And then while Trump was trying to quell the tensions, the, eco the economy market people, they were all panicking actually. Well, keep reading. Verse 6, And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley, three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the what? Oil. Oil. And the wine. Wow, 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 wow. How about that? What happens after this red horse war going against each other? Then what? You got the black horse. And it's so interesting how our current events follows this kind of trend, right? Something, they follow the trend of the red horse. And after that, they're following the trend of the black horse. That is really, really interesting, man. Now, obviously, in the Bible, I can understand that the word oil in the Bible can refer to something that you eat. So it does not have to necessarily refer to uh, gas prices. But you got to realize this. That book is not just only referring historically to their timeline. It, it is prophetic as well. It has that double application. And I convinced you. If, you, if I didn't convince you in this video, then please watch our Revelation commentary. I convince you that the book of Revelation, it is essential and crucial. You have double application. If you don't do that, you will not understand that book. You can't fit everything at a historical timeline to their period. Amen. There is no doubt a future prophecy. So sometimes the, the word can be there for a reason. So the Lord could be referring to this oil that's going on at the future. Now, obviously... The red horse and the black horse is not going on right now because the time, because why? It's not dramatic enough. We're not, I mean, this is not dramatic enough compared to chapter six, current events. It's got to be way worse than that, like to the point of realism. So these are all just precursors, obviously. But these precursors, like the Bible mentioned about, I mean, Jesus talked about the signs that you got to be observing and you got to look up for your redemption draw up nigh. But can I tell you something? Now, this one is not, uh, I haven't found confirmation on this one. This is more through a tabloid source, the sun. But what is very interesting is that if this is true, what, what's going on, if you go to the Persian Gulf area, there was a red moon coming out, but then it looked like devil, but it was going like this. 
Now, look at this. This is like devil horns, man. <laughs> Coincidentally, at the same time. Now, you know what the Bible says what happens during the tribulation, coincidentally? Let's look at the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24. The sign of Islam has always been their crescent moon, actually. But it is so interesting, and this happened at the Persian Gulf area. But what's so interesting is that before it risen up, the photographer, he made sure he got a good catch of it. He caught it where it looked like devil horns. And then it was like this full crescent moon came out after that. The full shape of the crescent moon came out after that. So it is pretty interesting that this sign of the time was matching up with what's going on here. What could it be? It could be precursors. Precursors to the real thing that will happen at the tribulation. Because the t it's pretty interesting, the timing. Yeah. The timing of red horse, black horse, and then the signs of the heavens, which kind of interestingly, interestingly matches with the seals, mm -hmm. with that black uh, red horse and then the black horse and then chaos, the signs within the heavens. Isn't that interesting, man? Yeah, yeah. Man, God's like sh showing already signs to the world like, hey, I think you better get saved in Jesus Christ right now. That's right. Yeah. So that you can get raptured because I'm showing you the real thing later on. Amen. I'm giving you warning signals, basically. Yeah. Let's, <clears throat> let's look at Matthew chapter 24. Notice what the Bible says right here, that in verse 29, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. I want you to compare that with Acts, with Acts chapter 2 as well. Acts chapter 2. <coughs> Acts chapter 2. So this is all talking about the same thing right here, about chaos in the heavens. Notice that there is chaos in the heavens, and the moon is mentioned over here. Acts chapter 2 and verse 20. Acts chapter 2 and verse 20. Notice the word of God reads, The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into what? Blood. Before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Notice right here that it was a red colored moon shape. But you know what's going to happen at the tribulation? Maybe, I don't know, but maybe the Lord's doing this where it could be literal blood in the moon where it can affect the waters. And that's why the book of Revelation mentions about the waters turning into what? Blood. Maybe, I don't know. That's interesting. That's real interesting. Now, that's just a wild theory. Obviously, that's not doctrine. But I'll tell you one thing. There is no doubt the Lord's showing you signs over here, like warning signs that's reflecting from the book of Revelation. So you better get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ before he sounds that rapture call. Amen?